Sun Fall here with a guide for Downtown Nakatsu March Super Awesome Field Day. So the first thing we want to do is change the sound settings so that way there you lower the volume because the volume is a bit loud. Then you want to go into the control settings, player one control and then config. We want to push um, B, X, Y, Windows button, A, L, T and the burger button. Then once you've done that hit OK, back out of the menus, hit play and then push the B button to skip everything. Hit B on 1, B again, and B OK. Then just hit B to go through all this. We don't want to change anything. Then at this screen, we want to pick Ichijo, which is this guy right here. Once you find the 140, hit B, and wait till it back screen, then save it. When we start the match, you want to move up and push B to melee the first couple of guys. And you want to push double, double tap on the right D-pad to run. The reason we move up is that we can go around that pit. And then as long as you've gotten past that bit, ahead of everybody else you should be good. I included a bad run here just to show you that you want to abuse the saves that you make. You want to make a separate save because that way you've got the original. So for this bit here we just have to get into the door as quickly as possible. Once we're in the door first we can save it again. The objective we've actually got at the moment is to try and get a weapon. Right here I forget how to jump which is the A button because we can change the control systems to make it easier so what you want to do when you come through this door is move down, go over here, run and jump and then we can get through. The first save is that way if we make a mistake or we're not happy we can go back to the start. Through here you want to climb pretty much as soon as possible so that way you don't get attacked. I jumped at the end so that way I didn't get hit with one of the sticks. This part here, your priority is actually to get a weapon, but I was too concerned with being chased and punched. So what I did for this next few seconds, sections, and I even fast forward it to show you guys, is that I ran through to see if I could try and get a find a weapon. The best weapon you want is a stick or a wand. Preferably the stick, it seems to be the strongest. You want to go up here to avoid the water, and if you jump in, you've actually got to climb back down, so that's another reason why you'd want to load there if you did that. So we check the screen again, and the weapons haven't changed. So I figure I'm just screwed, and I may as well continue, so this is the actual run here. You want to move down with the D-pad. This game, it's very much a D-pad kind of game. Uh, using clicking right twice to run, moving up and down with the D-pad. So there's the stick, but uh, I got unlucky and landed in the water, so I have to load. But thankfully, I saved it here, so there should be another should be a stick, um, which is very handy for this next screen. You want the ship stick by this next screen. If you don't have one by this next screen, you unfortunately will have to load your um, backup save. So this one we got to race the other guys so that before they climb up that thing. And so basically when you get up to the shrubs you have to hold up and then jump so you jump into the foreground. And as you can see it's very tricky to kind of do. So I know their movements now. So what my plan is is to hit the guy in front of me but I have to time it so that way I knock him just before I climb up so I have enough time to set them. See and now they're all knocked down. So I can save it and then I can continuously hit B to melee them. Pick up a weapon by the way is also B. B is your main button to run. Double tap the right on the T-pad, as I've said, but I thought I'd mention again, and the jump is A. To jump in foregrounds, you uh, hit up on the D-pad and then A. As you can see, that I'm showing you failed attempts at trying to keep them in place. You want to position yourself just right so that doesn't happen. Otherwise they will get past you. And you want to save it every time you've done a little bit of health. We have 7 minutes for to do just this section, so it's plenty of time to whittle their health down. You want to be careful because uh, you can knock them when they jump into the next screen. And that will require a load. I do show that in a minute. There you go, right there. See, he just went into the next screen. So I have to load it. And then I, I actually take a few seconds so that way I don't do it again. 
This strategy is so that we basically win the race by default. <laughs> the best way to win. The one that I was talking about is actually just down on the left side of the screen as well, like you, would, you can see. This race consists of three times we have to do this. All with Ichijo, we cannot change this character, so remember his face. Once we've taken out the last guy, we can climb up before you leave this screen, save it. Because we want to back up this save. So what we're going to do is go through the next three screens to see if we can find a health potion. And I'm fast forwarding to show you. I'm checking the three screens. You want to climb up here. And see nothing. No potion. So we load it. And this is one where we found a potion. So you jump over that crack so you don't trip over. And then you just fall down here. And there's a potion. Now to get a potion and keep your weapon, you want to run and then jump. And then hit jump again to throw the weapon. And it'll stay on screen. To pick up the... Um, potion and drink it, or the health potion, you push B to pick it up, then B to drink it. And then you want to jump in the water, make sure you take a lot of um, breaths, because you can't breathe, you'll drown if you are underwater. The, as you can see the jets will also push you down, so be aware of that. And you just want to keep moving with the right stick, you've got plenty of time because everyone else is dead. Here it's actually slower in on the ground, so you want to jump in the water and just go through there. Then we should try and jump over the pit. If you make it over the pit, let me know. I could never seem to do that. And there we go, we won the race by default. So now we save it. And this is the best part. So the start was always the hardest, because we didn't have a weapon, we had to get a weapon. But this is the best part. So the race is over. Pick Ichigo, Ichijo again, and look, we've got a stick this time. How awesome is that? We've still got 140 health, because the potion all it did was restore what we had, but you save it on the black screen again, so that way we've got a backup. And this time we can run through, and see we knock someone over because we had the stick. The reason you want to go up and run is because you can go around the pit, as you saw, which makes it extremely handy. This run, I'm not showing any uh, fails or anything, I'm showing you just the run straight. No problem. See, right here, I was tempted to stop for that potion, but it's not worth it. The only time it's worth to get the potions is when they're not around, because A, you fall behind, B, they try and damage you, so you lose that little bit of health you want anyway. It's just better to be in front of them. Right there when I was jumping because I was hitting A and B, I threw my weapon. But I picked it up just before I left the screen, so it's all good. Just as long as you have that stick, you're A-OK. -okay. You want to jump over and then drop down and then jump up. You made me drop my weapon, but it's fine. Thankfully they both jumped in the water so I can get ahead of them. Again, same strategy, knock them out. I always keep my saves in, so that way you can see when I save it though. I don't like you to think I didn't save it at all. Because uh, Itchy Joe doesn't have much health and we have to use him for every single event, that's why I said remember his face. We, uh, unfortunately, need those potions, so that's why I advise loading when you get some. To get some, I should say, not when. 
You want to save it when you get some. <laughs> so again, you know, I save here. And then we continue on. Remember, run, jump, B. Unfortunately, um, I should have thrown it the other way because, as you know, there's a cliff here. But lucky for me, there was a stick in the next section, so... Because you want to throw it so that it doesn't fall off something, or, um... What's the, what's the other word? Get somewhere you can't get it back. So sometimes, so like at the finish line, you want to throw it so it hits the wall and not past the finish line, because otherwise you can't retrieve it. Again with the water, remember, to get your oxygen. Again, to jump in the water here. Jump over this pit. Again, if you can make it over this pit, let me know, that'd be awesome. And we win again by default. Yay! Default. So I want Ichijo again, which who has the stick, and he's got 128 health, so we lost some health, unfortunately. I was a bit slow on the uh, save there, but it's okay. Because this is a new race, I wanted to show you failing, so I load this again, because we want to try and get to the door as fast as possible before the others. Because this door is very important, this first door. Because we can, if we can race them to this ladder, which I almost had it on the first, as you saw, if we race them to this ladder... Again, I'm showing my fails to show you it takes more than one attempt. And I was able to do it here. We can actually kill them. We only have a minute, but that's plenty of time. And you just want to keep hitting them like we were doing for the other race. That was only The other race was only two, not three, and I am sorry for saying three. I actually thought it was three. But I was probably thinking of a different one of these. So this one is probably the same, it's only two. You don't need to stress about the time. There is plenty of time to finish this section. Once we take these guys out. So, I'm going to speed up killing him, only to show you the jumping section. And I also didn't save it when I kill him, so... So when you jump, don't run and jump. You'll miss. The trick to this section is basically to stay calm, but also you'll see in a sec once we kill him again. Properly, because now I save it. I didn't think to save it last time. <laughs> So you climb the ladder, and then you walk, hit A, B, A, and then A again, and then A. Simple as that. Don't hammer A, don't hit it triple because you'll throw your stick. Just once, every time, you land on the platform. Here we've got the uh, potion again, so I'm running, jump, and throw. Pick up the potion, drink, pick up your weapon, save it, and then leave the screen. I got lucky and I got a second one. This wasn't even uh, save load, this was literally how it came to me, so it was pretty good. I got lucky with a lot of potions on this particular run. I also got lucky picking up the stick then. <laughs> so with this one it's the same, just walk, jump, jump, and then you'll be on the platform. Here, the lights go out, so it's a little hard to see, but you basically just want to make your way across with jumping. Again, this is the finish line, so you don't want to throw it left, you want to throw the stick right, which is what I'm trying to do, but there's a hole right there, so the timing was a bit hard. Once I did that, I could drink the health potion, pick up the stick, and win the race by default. Now we want to pick H Joe again. As you can see, we have 255 health, so we've gone up some health, so that's great. 
save on the black screen again. It gives you more time to respond. That's why I prefer the black screen. So this is a good run, so you can see it for without any loads. Sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll knock them off the ladder for you, which helps the setup much more, as you can see. And even if they go flying, luckily they don't go flying past the screen, like the other area. <laughs> Remember, keep saving it every time someone dies or you do a significant amount of damage. You don't need long to complete this section, as I've said. And you're about to see, I've got seven seconds. Jump, jump, done. Three seconds left. Plenty of time. So here I unfortunately lose my stick, but it's okay because, like I said, there's only two races for this part. I did try to retrieve it, but I ended up in the next section, so it doesn't matter. The main reason it doesn't matter is because, to some degree, you don't actually want a weapon going into the next game. I found it was a little bit... Um, what's the word? Trying to think of the word to describe it. I think unnecessary would probably be the word I'd go with. Because you you don't necessarily need it and it there will be weapons and you can't climb with a weapon, so unnecessary is probably the word I'd go with. So we pick it to go Joe again with our 255 base health. And with this mini game, we want to save it on the black screen again. So the object of this mini game is to climb up the pole and punch the balloon till it bursts. So the trick is, and I didn't need to show any failed attempts, thankfully, because I actually got it first go. You want to climb the pole and hopefully have your guy, which is in the blue jeans, he's in your on your team. Hopefully have him climb the same pole as you. Again, make backup saves. Uh, this is why a weapon is kind of useless, because you need to use X to kick them, and B to punch. Uh, you can see me punch on the right, so what you use is the D-pad to aim, depending on what, what you need to do. I only punched on the right while I was climbing, um, because I wanted to get them off the pole so I could climb more. You gotta push up on the D-pad to climb, right on the D-pad with B to punch, as you saw, right to kick, with the d-pad you do that just before they're they reach you and you can actually kick them off before they can get anywhere close to doing damage and then it's b upwards to punch so this is why it's a little bit tricky as long as you're um the one doing it you're the one that will win even though the other guys on your team which is what you want just keep punching the balloon knocking them down and hopefully your teammate might help and knock them down as well. Either way, as long as he's behind your butt, he won't knock you off. If the other guys were behind you, they would knock you off. And once you've done enough damage to the balloon, pop goes the weasel, make a backup save. Then you got to do that game again. Pick it to Joe again. As you can see, we lost a little bit of health. That's why I said health is important. Save on the black screen. Here's your backup. I always like to let them sort of go for a little bit before I climb. The amount of damage they will do isn't much. As you can see, I'm climbing right here. Punching this guy with B or aiming right, climbing up, and then doing the same to the next guy. 
than kicking this guy down, because he can climb really fast for some reason, but that's the randomest. And this is why I said you can save it when you win, because then you can uh, load it and hopefully re-roll re the dice if you getting you find your guys are too tough. It takes a while to punch the balloon because we have no uh, strength or abilities really, as it's you judge. So that's why it's not like me not damaging it or anything, it's the amount of damage he does is not much. Uh, thankfully the uh, partner distracts them sometimes so they take a little bit longer. I like to kick early so that way I can just get them off straight away even if it takes away some of the punching time because I get more punching time while they're down. As you can see the orange guy can climb very fast. Which is very annoying while I'm trying to punch this balloon open. <laughs> and there we go, we won that one as well. I found this one the easiest of the minigames, but as you can see that's why the kendo stick was basically um, not worth the trouble. Now we're on 203 health. And we've got our third round. Always save it if your partner's behind you and you're at the top, because then you've got a clean save. And if you make any mistakes or get knocked off by the AI, you've got somewhere to load it. Because the AI can occasionally get cheap shots in and knock you off. If you get too distracted punching the balloon like I did a couple of times. And it doesn't, depending on the AIs they picked that you're conversing, they have a str really strong punch, some of them, so they can get the balloon broken in a few hits. Don't hit Y. That's what I just did then. <laughs> uh. Brings up your stats and it just, yeah, it's distracting. Just keep punching this balloon. As you can see, we're forming a good crack. kicking them when they get close and there we go we've won the third round of this mini game on to the next mini game the next mini game is going to be uh, really difficult but i believe in you so we pick it you go joe again we're going in with 203 health which isn't bad it's not bad save on the black screen as always and my little tactic I like to do is try and immediately get a weapon. I'm including my failed attempts here so you can see uh, it's not quite simple. Basically I, f I stayed in a corner and I only attacked if they got close. But you want to try and get a weapon so that way you can try and knock them down. Avoid anyone with an ability. As you can see that guy has a mock punch, that's why it glows. Once you get the weapon, you can pretty much just sit and use it, and once they're all knocked down, you save it. And then basically load it if they knock you. But the strategy is to basically get a weapon and then run away. Let them all fight it out. Only hit them if they come close to knock them down, and then run away. They will continue to fight each other, and only one or two separate to attack you, and once you knock them down, the one that isn't focused on you will focus on them, which keeps them distracted for a little bit. And that's the strategy. 
ideally you'd want a better weapon than the weapon I've got, but for now we're just dealing with what the RNG gave us. Because during the last mini game we couldn't take a weapon with us because you can't climb the pole without a weapon. With a weapon, I should say, not without. <laughs> We're trying to lose as little HP as possible because we have to survive three rounds of this. So one guy's dead, so I'm gonna save it while those two are fighting. As you can see, he's Mark Punch. Not ideal that you have to fight someone like that. But that's the card you dropped. Better him now than later on though because then I can get rid of him, and they can't pick him again. So now when I took out him, because there were only two left, it was very easy to take out those two. I can focus on this guy. Now the strategy with taking out one person is not to let them get away, and to just keep beating on them when they get up, because you'll do tons of damage. And as you can see, he got me there, because the strategy is you want to stay at the front of his feet. As you'll see, I'll move into his feet range. That's when he gets up and he can't do a move. If I let him get any further away, like that, he lays into me. So now we're going to save Scum, basically, the damage to him because we don't want him to get up and beat into us. But if you keep close put somebody to his feet like this, it shouldn't be too difficult. When he does this, you want to be in the middle of the body. You see how I'm staying at his feet, so it's not giving him a chance to do anything. Now he's on one health. It's a good time to save it while he's down. Who you verse will be completely random to who I verse, but I'm still hoping to give you guys a bit of a strategy. Distance is basically your friend. So we won that one, so we pick Ichijo again. And as you can see, we're down to 165 health, so we lost quite a bit, unfortunately. And there's the kendo stick we wanted. We got one guy that's coming after us. So we take him out, and now that we've got some breathing room, it's a good time to save. Ideally, I want to throw that weapon away so there's no other weapon, and just the stick, since the stick is in play, and they already threw away the, um, brass knocks. So now I'm the only one with a weapon, there's no other weapon. It's actually a perfect, um, situation right here, because I can run away when there's too many on me, like now, and let them fight it out, and I only have to deal with when one or two come to me. Ideally, you want to make sure that you're not in a middle spot as well, you want to have your back somewhere, so that way they can't come up behind you, because they will come up behind you. There. They love to come up behind you. See, as that guy got behind me, I ran away. This is the best strategy I can come up with, is to basically only atta attack if you're getting attacked. Otherwise, just let them fight it out. When there's two left, you usually can finish the job of, of, of them, but it, dep it depends on the RNG of who you've got. Because if they've got like, if you've got like two of them that have powers or something, it's better to just let them try and take each other out and and, and basically run away. As you can see, Blue Shorts guy really wants me, and Green Shorts guy really wants to kill him. And thankfully Green Shorts is winning, so I'm able to just sit over here. Until he decided that that wasn't going to plan, and then Blue decided he wanted him.
It's a slow, but it's a... It works, the strategy, so that's why I stuck with it. Now blue's taken out, and now we can focus on green. See, I was about to save there, but I would have got myself in a situation where it was a bad save because he was up. The best time to save is when he's getting knocked down or when he's down. It gives you time to plan your next move. See, because he's a jumper, it's a lot harder to keep him up pinned. As long as you do the foot strategy, you shouldn't have too much trouble. And because he's near a wall now, it's even basically even better. Because we should be able to just pin him down and whittle his health. And he shouldn't really get any moves in. run that round and now we've got one last round and we get to pick Ichigo, Ichijo again and we're on 139. So he started with 140 so we've only lost one of his health. So that's not bad considering we're on the last round. So like I said, the strategy is just to run around until they stop and fight each other. I unfortunately had one guy that wouldn't leave me alone but he left me alone now so and I was about to save but then he decided to attack me again so it's running away time. I had to get out of there quickly because that guy was going to lay into me. I haven't saved it yet, but I'm trying to get some good distance so I can save. Finally. Because this gives us breathing room. Sometimes it's good to just to sit in one spot and whack your stick because they're in a position where you can just damage them and they're not going to damage you. You do got to be careful of them though. As you can see, you got a punch in and then I got kicked. Grab my stick and get out of there before they do any more damage. Since he died, that just definitely gives us some breathing room. Because the other two are still fighting. And now we took out number three as well. So again, stick to his feet. Since he's in the middle, it's a bit more tricky. Fortunately, he got a hit in. But I was able to get the stick. Because he's a kicker, like I said, it's a little bit more difficult, but there we go. We beat him, and we didn't save it. Oh, that was lucky as, because it could have gone the other way real quick, and I would have had to load and waste time. But with that, we've won all the events with Itchy Joe. So now we just got to watch the ceremony. As you can see, our team won. So that'll get us three achievements. Here is the first one, sports tournament champion. Win the sports tournament on single player.
Here's the second one, Naketsu Team's Power, win the sports tournament with the Naketsu Team on single player, that's who Ichijo was a part of. And the last one, the real power of Ichijo, win all matches while using Ichijo on single player. Congrats on doing that, now you can do the easy achievements. Hit control manual and then scroll all the way over to the right and then you will get master of control. Then we can go into settings, display settings, scan lines, change it to smooth, hit B and that will get us CRT screen for adjusting the scan lines. Then we can go into sound settings and we can turn reverb on, push B and that will get us reverberation of retro sound. Then we can return to the top menu, go into the settings on this screen, go into individual settings and then pick an avatar with A. That'll get us change your avatar, transform. Then we go edit background. Push right on the T-pad and push A. And that'll get us another achievement. I pushed B, so I had to do it again. Change your background. Now we want to go to online play. Create a room. Don't have to change the settings if you don't want. Change only friends. Create a room. And that'll get us, show us what you've got. Now we've got one last achievement to get, which is the completion achievement. So I'll show you here. To get this achievement, just close the game and relaunch it. Once you get to the main menu of the game, the achievement will pop. And that is all the achievements. Congratulations on your 1000G, and thank you for watching.